Hi guys, Anna here, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about painting commissions. If you're an artist and you're thinking about taking on some commission work, or maybe you're a collector and you're interested in hiring an artist, then please keep watching. Now, commissioning a work of art can be kind of scary and overwhelming at first, especially if you've never done it before and you aren't sure where to start. So in an effort to kind of dispel some of the mysteries and maybe feelings of apprehension you might be having, I decided to create this video just to offer some insight on the commission process and to give you some ideas for how to get started. First off, what is commissioned art? Well, commissioned art comes in all different shapes and forms. I like to think of it as a collaboration. It's the result of a vision that you, the client, have for painting combined with the artist's skill and technique to make that vision a reality. Sometimes people commission paintings that are similar to something they saw in a show or on the artist's website, but maybe that's already sold. Other times they want to commemorate a milestone or event, such as a wedding or a child coming of age. Quite often the commissions that I get the most of are of, of people's kids when they're that fleeting toddler age where they can kind of somewhat follow instructions, but they still have that adorable baby fat. Really, as the artist, it becomes my job to help steer that vision for whatever it is they want towards something that will become a family heirloom and hopefully a lasting work of art. So how do you find the right artist? Well, there are lots of ways to find an artist, but the choices can be overwhelming. Galleries can be a great place to start. It gives you the opportunity to see the artist's work in person, so you have a better idea of their style and technique. But keep in mind that if you discover an artist through a gallery, you're going to want to commission the work through the gallery as well. You'll work with them directly on pricing and payment and that kind of thing, and then coordinate with the artist to make the painting happen. There's also some great artist listings out there, such as portraitartist.com, where you can find an artist based on location or subject matter or pricing and kind of go from there. One great way to get more affordable work done is to commission an emerging artist or art student. I can't tell you how grateful I was for each commission I got when I was first starting out, uh, especially during high school and college. But let's say you want to work with me, for example. Am I the right artist for you? Is what you have in mind going to align with the work you might see on my website or social media? Sometimes I get asked if I can do things that really don't make sense based on my style or subject matter. But once in a while, I'm up to the challenge, such as when I was commissioned to do a historical portrait of Abraham Lincoln. Now, I had never done anything like that before, and it was a huge challenge, but it was still definitely within my skill set, and I'm really glad that I took that on. That being said, do your research. Decide ahead of time if you want something in charcoal or watercolor, pastel, oil, or sculpture even. Find the right artist for the style and medium you're looking for. Then reach out to them and ask if they're accepting commissions. Sometimes this initial communication can make or break whether or not you work with someone. Do they get back to you in a timely manner? Do they answer your questions thoroughly? And follow up with questions of their own to make sure you're both on the same page? If there's someone you connect with and they are able to fit your budget and timeline, then they might be the right person to entrust with your project and vision. So you find an artist, what do you say to them? This is an important one. So often I get random emails or DMs from people simply asking in one sentence, how much for a portrait? Or can you paint my dog? <laughs> I mean, come on, you gotta give me more than that. If you're really not sure what to say or ask, Here's a great example of an email I got from someone inquiring about a commission. Now, I've changed some of the details here just out of respect for the client's privacy. But she writes, quote, Hello, Anna. My name is Lisa, and I discovered your paintings on your website while doing research on artists who do commissioned oil paintings. I'm interested in having a portrait done of me as a gift for my husband. And there were several examples on your site that are in the style I'd be interested in. And then she lists a couple of painting titles that she liked in particular. She continues, I actually live in Dallas, and it appears you lived here for a while, so you know the area. I don't know if you get back to Dallas at all or if you do all your work in Colorado now, but I would be interested in talking with you about the possibility of working together on such a portrait. It looks like from your process that you're able to do some work from life and some from photos. My timing is flexible. I would either like to have the painting for his birthday in September or alternatively for a Christmas gift this year. I'm looking for something moderately sized that can be hung in our bedroom, and my budget for this would be somewhere between four and six thousand. 
I can be reached by email and by cell phone. I look forward to hearing from you. Okay, so Lisa here just gave me lots of great information that helps me know what I might be taking on. First of all, she filled me in on how she found me, and she told me that she already likes my work and my style. A little flattery never hurts, right? And it's really helpful that she listed a few pieces of mine that are similar to what she's looking for. So I'm already in my brain thinking, okay, this is something I can do. Second, she gave me a timeline and a budget so I can start thinking about a painting size and a scope for the project that will accommodate both of those things. Third, she mentioned that she's interested in having at least part of the painting done from life. So that tells me that she's read up on my website about my preferred method of working and that she'd like to make that happen. Often if a client wants me to travel out to them, I'll figure out a way to make that work without tacking on extra expenses for them. So in this case, I was actually able to schedule a sitting and photo shoot with her right there in Dallas, the same week that I was teaching a workshop. So that worked out great. So just to recap, you should be prepared to answer these questions when inquiring about a commissioned piece. Number one, who or what is the painting of? Number two, what is the occasion of commissioning this painting, if any? Number three, how big would you like the piece to be and do you know where it will hang? This is kind of important for determining size, pose, frame style, and color scheme. Number four, what will the desired setting be? Will it be formal, casual, indoors, outdoors? Do you want it in the spring or the fall? Number five, what is your budget? Number six, when do you need it finished by and are you willing to be flexible and work with the artist's schedule? For example, I am a busy mom with two little kids, so the past couple of years I've had to give myself just an extra cushion of time in order to get a painting finished to my satisfaction. I won't let it leave my studio until I'm ready. Here's another big one. What if you want to commission a work of art as a surprise for a loved one? Well, in my experience, sometimes a husband will want to surprise his wife with a commissioned piece, but unless she's involved in it, the results might not exactly be what she would want. So as an alternative to making it a total surprise, I actually recommend giving your spouse or whoever the gift is supposed to be for a gift card, which you would pay for up front once we've discussed the approximate size and scope of the portrait. And then I can work with the spouse or whoever the subject is in this painting afterwards to create the work of art. Now here are some more frequently asked questions. One is, do I ever work from client photos? Well, this is actually the most common question I get asked and my best and most original work is created when I get a chance to meet my subject in person, do a color study and take my own reference photos. However, I totally understand with the current state of affairs um, that sometimes I'll have to make exceptions, but I only work from photos that I think will make for a great painting and I usually like to work from more than one. So what do I look for when clients send me possible reference photos to work from? The subject should be photographed with a high quality camera and lens, preferably in soft natural lighting, such as the window light I'm using here or outdoors. Avoid flash or high contrast sunlight where maybe there's dark shadows and washed out lights. That just doesn't make for a very good painting. There should be minimal or no distortion. Now distortion would be things like an arm coming towards you and looking humongous or vice versa. Maybe it's, it's further away and uh, looking tiny because it's further away from the lens. Or sometimes I see this with pets. We take a photo from up above and the dog's head looks enormous compared to a tiny little body. Another thing to avoid would be bold patterns or trendy clothing that might date the portrait unless of course that's the specific look you're going for. When it comes to expression, I prefer soft smiles where there's no teeth showing. Great big smiles look awesome in photos, but a little bit weird in paintings. I encourage having multiple photo references so that I can get a really good idea of the subject's mannerisms, their expressions, their posture, and their likeness under different lighting situations. Now, if the photos were taken by a professional photographer, make sure you have a signed release form from that photographer because I don't wanna mess with copyright infringement. Just don't want to deal with it. Another question I get asked is, do you require a contract? Well, yes. <laughs> In order to protect us both, I do have a very simple contract for commissions, and it's easily accessible for previewing right on my website. Usually once everything's been decided on, I ask for 50% down at the start of the project, and then the final 50% once the painting has been finished and approved. So how long does it take to do a painting? Well, this really depends on the size and the scale and the complexity and the number of subjects, but I always try to meet a deadline if the deadline is within reason. 
Oil paintings, you know, by nature, they just take longer to dry, so I pre prefer to have at least a couple of months to do a painting. Sometimes I get asked, what if I can't afford you? Can you work smaller? Well, working smaller isn't necessarily cheaper or less time consuming for me, but I do offer miniatures as an option. You can always stick them in a giant frame and make it look a little larger with that. But for the record, I've never had someone say, oh, I wish I'd made that painting smaller. Usually the regret is that they didn't go larger. If you're going to take the time and effort and expense to commission a painting, it might as well make a statement, right? Finally, the big question, how much do you charge? Well, my prices are generally based on size. I price by the square inch and all that is listed on my website. But because each commissioned work is unique, just know that there's going to be that custom element to it, even on the pricing side of things. And I'll do my best to work with you within your budget. I will say this, do be clear about your budget and scope when you first approach the artist you want to work with. And don't try to negotiate way down. Artists spend years and sometimes thousands of dollars at art school de developing their craft and technique just to reach the level they're at. So chances are whatever the artist's pricing structure, they've thought hard about it just to make sure that they are getting adequately paid for their time and their talent and their materials. I hope this helps you get a better idea of how to get started with commissioning a painting. It's a worthy effort, and I can tell you as a collector myself, there's nothing more special than having an original work of art in your home, especially if you've had it custom made. If you've got more questions, just shoot me an email. Consultations are always free, and there's no commitment until everyone is ready. Thanks for watching.